Dan Vogelberg. <laughs> Best Rolling Pizza. Anyway, he's going to play a, a tune that he, uh, he really enjoys playing for people. So here it is, and then we'll join him up here right after that. Kenny, take it away. How you doing, everybody? Everybody having a good time? Okay, I, ju I just want to, before I do my little rap, before I, when I do Rocky Mountain Wave, I just, I want to say something else. You know, this is the first, uh, this is the first time I've come in December. And I've been trying to, uh, to get here for many years to come in December. When Tommy passed away, uh, I didn't, uh, I was out of the country. And fortunately, Joe Walsh and Joe Vitale came to the funeral, and it was a very sad day for me, just like I'm sure it was for you. And uh, the lucky thing for me about Tommy was that I had a chance to meet him very early on. Like some of you who grew up with him, some of you who uh, dated him. <laughs> Some of you got high with him, you know. Later, later the bad high, not not, not the good high, but the early the early stuff when it was fun. And so when I met Tommy, this runaway kid who 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 left this town to seek his fame and fortune, and shows up in Denver, it's 1968. Uh, it was amazing. You know, I was in a band. I'm, couple years old, Tommy turned 65, I'll be, I'm 67, so I was, you know, I was the big brother type when we first met, and back then, our hair was the same length, and he was taller than me, but we, we, we felt that we even looked like brothers, and uh, anyway, the Tommy that I knew back then, and, and, and again, I think it's, it's proper, you know, we can have a great time, but we also have to, we have to feel a little bit. We have to feel a little bit of the sadness of, 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 of somebody leaving, you know? But also the joy of what they left behind. And I think that's what, that's what, what Johnny and Trace and all the people involved here and what they do. Right? Right on. I mean, that's what pulls me back every year. It's my third year. Okay? And then, and then you got these great guys like, like Dean, who's so dedicated to Tommy. I was telling him earlier, I said, you know, you, you know, you, the spirit of Tommy lives within you, and, and, and you never even knew the guy, right? But the, your, your approach to the music, the fact that you feel his music so much and know that it was a feel, you know, that's really what it's about. And that's all we really can do, right, with the past, is, is to feel it, and then it comes back alive again when you believe. So, uh, anyway, my experiences with Tommy were, were phenomenal, and they were short-lived. Met him, he was 17, you know, when he, I don't know what, exactly when he, when he uh, decided to leave and ended up in Denver, and I heard him play one of the first nights he was in town, and it was at a, uh, a club, and there was this kid, he had these baggy white pants, I always remember that, his hair as long as his guitar, and he plugged in and just, everybody just went, what, what is this? And, uh, but here, and he had this beautiful smile and this, this gentle, naive type, I mean, when I think naive, I can say it now, but back then we were all naive, right? 68, everything was like, wow. But when I think back, it was pure. It was pure, and I think that's another thing that his music is, that's, that's le what he's left us with, is there was a purity there, because that's all he wanted to do. You know, he, you know, when I think back, it was, everybody wanted to make money and be famous and all that, but the real thing was to have fun and to have, have people be able to play for people and people respond to it. And, that whole back and forth thing. The fame and fortune, that's, that's the world. And that was the thing that, uh, that I think really, he wasn't expecting, most people aren't aware of what's gonna happen. Come on, we're all sitting here. We've dodged the bullets, haven't we? Yeah. Yeah? Woo! Come on, we've dodged the bullets. You know, we really have. We, we really have all the, all, everything. I mean, that's why we're sitting here. We, we can actually, and poor Tommy, it, he couldn't dodge the bullets. The bullets came on too strong. And it was, 
you know, I danced through them. I was in in all those in the NFL, the, you know, and, and below that in the farm team and all the other things getting there. You know what? It's like Hank Williams. He had the song. You know, and it was it, you know he it was it was a tough ride, and and we made it. He didn't make it, but his music lives on, and I I applaud Sioux City. Which I, which I love. I love this town. I think there's some really, really nice people here. I felt it from the first time I came three years ago. Everybody's, everybody's so kind, and I see where Tommy, you know, where this comes from. When I was with Joe Walsh and Barnstorm, because we knew Tommy, uh, this is way, you know, 72, we'd come through town and, and visit, and visit Mr. and Mrs. Bolin. You know, we'd go to the house, and Johnny, you know, when he was young, right? No, Johnny's the same cat I've known since uh, back then. He's, again, he's, a, he, he's so much like Tommy in the sense of a really, really nice guy. You know, I know he, you know, right, Johnny? Are you a nice guy? He is a nice guy. The Bolins were nice people, and, and the kids represented that. So I'm going to, before I do the rock and roll thing and everybody comes up, I want to do something just real heartfelt and I want you all to sing with me because I know you know the song okay so I'm gonna get on the piano I'm gonna sing this and we're gonna it's to Tommy it's about what what a tough world it is and and, and how wild it is and and uh, we'll always remember that smile okay <laughs>
It's hard to get by just upon a smile. Let's get up and play some rock and roll.